get ready. Drayton Manor is a historic theme park found in Staffordshire, England that has been operating since 1950. But the park's history predates this. The clock tower at the park's entrance dates back to 1835, for example. The land in which the park is built was also requisitioned by the British Army and acted as a training post during World War II. As a theme park though, there's a number of now historic attractions that we've lost to time. Many of these were once pivotal attractions that really helped establish Drayton Manor in the UK theme park industry. Join us in today's video as we visit the Drayton Manor attraction graveyard and learn about seven former rides once found at this park. But before we jump into the video, please give this video a like if you enjoy this type of content and consider subscribing. We have plenty of UK theme park videos already on our channel. Anyway, let's get back to the attraction graveyard. Get ready. G-Force, 2005 to 2018. Kicking things off, we're first going to take a look at the infamous G-Force. For thrill seekers visiting this park, this was probably high up on their list of must rides. G-Force was the park's unique Marrow manufactured X-Car steel coaster. The ride opened to the public on July 26, 2005 in a ceremony featuring X-Factor season one runner-up G4. And surely we aren't the only ones who have absolutely zero recollection of this band. The ride cost £2.5 million to build and was a significant investment for Drayton Manor at the time. The ride offered a very unusual inverted lift hill where riders ascended up the lift hill at an angle before being held upside down before the first drop. The ride offered three inversions in total, featuring a top speed of 70 km an hour and a top height of 25 meters. For many, G-Force had better results from a marketing perspective based on its unique features, more so than as an actual coaster. It made for an interesting experience, but not necessarily one that would demand a re-ride. The ride was never a coaster enthusiast favourite, and it was an incredibly short ride. Nevertheless, G-Force was popular and often would attract long lines, but this may have also been because of operational issues. The ride experienced consistent downtime during the 2018 season. The cost of maintenance of the ride was said to be too high and it didn't reopen for the 2019 season. The track was dismantled and it's said that the coaster is now in storage somewhere in the Netherlands. A very anticlimactic ending to a once very prominent coaster. Big Wheel, 1986 to 2017. What's a theme park without a traditional Ferris wheel? Unfortunately for Drayton Manor, they've been without one since 2017. Big Wheel was the park's Ferris wheel, which originally opened in 1986. Its multicoloured paint scheme was very evocative of Drayton Manor as a whole for quite a few years. In a move to try to generate more revenue, the Big Wheel was closed in 2017 and sold to Billing Aquadrome. The land where this ride once stood was cleared in order to make way for an upcharge attraction theme to Accelerator. As previously mentioned, this was most likely a dark time financially for Drayton Manor. Nevertheless, we'd love to see the return of another Ferris wheel at this park. Python Loop and Coaster, Klondike Goldmine, 1984 to 1995 to 2004. This attraction originally opened as Python Loop and Coaster in 1984, manufactured by Italian company Pinfari. It was later refurbished in 1995, sporting a fresh name and theme. Klondike Goldmine Coaster operated for a further nine years before closing in 2004. The coaster featured a top height of 11 meters and a very short track length of just 365 meters. Regardless, it also featured a small vertical loop, which would have been its main selling point. By modern standards, this is definitely not a coaster to write home about. Following its closure, the ride was then purchased by Funland Hailing Island, opening in 2005 and later closing in 2015. It was then sold to Irish company Euroshow, who operate travelling fun fairs, where it featured in their attraction lineup for a few years. These days, the coaster is operated by Degler Attractions in the United States, where it acts as the only travelling looping coaster in the entire country. What was most likely a number of viewers' very first looping coaster, at least now they can still get the opportunity to ride it again. Pirate Adventure, 1990-2015 for all you dark ride lovers out there, this one probably stings a little. Pirate Adventure was Drayton Manor's large indoor boat ride that opened in 1990. This ride took some very clear inspiration from another pirate-based boat ride attraction found in parks belonging to a certain mega media corporation. In fact, 
we actually discussed this very attraction in our video covering rides that shamelessly ripped off Pirates of the Caribbean, just in case there was any uncertainty about what we were referring to. Anyway, the ride featured many scenes you might be familiar with, including a ransacked village, a sea battle, and spooky caves. And if that wasn't enough, there's also a scene featuring prisoners trying to retrieve their cell keys from the mouth of an animal. Drayton Manor chose to go with a goat instead of a dog though. Pirate Adventure was manufactured by Mack Rides and was the park's best themed attraction. Ignoring the original inspiration, this was a well-designed and immersive attraction that featured a well-themed station and a lot of animatronics. The ride did begin to show its age though, particularly in the later years of its operation. The quality gap between this ride and the others it was imitating grew larger and Pirate Adventure was looking very worn down. The cost of refurbishing the ride was probably considerably high after many years of neglect. Eventually it closed in 2015, never to be opened again. In more recent years, several parts were sold off at auction in 2020, an act which is probably indicative of some financial difficulty at the park. The original boats are said to be stored on site in a storage area beside the resort's hotel. Log Flume, 1981 to 1998. As the name would suggest, Log Flume was Drayton Manor's original token Log Flume attraction. It originally opened in March of 1981 and was produced by French ride manufacturer Reverchon. The ride originally opened with one drop before a further two drops were added for the 1987 season following a major refurbishment. The highest drop was a mere 8 meters, making it a flume more suited to families with younger riders as opposed to thrill seekers. The ride was eventually scrapped in 1998 to make way for Storm Force 10, which opened the following year and where it still operates today. Part of the ride were later purchased and repurposed by Flamingoland in order to extend their Klondike Creek log flume, and just like Drayton Manor's log flume, these parts were used to extend the attraction from one drop to three. Super Dragon, 1984 to 2007. The second Pinfari Junior coaster on our list Super Dragon is what many might refer to as a Big Apple or Wacky Worm coaster. While never a headline attraction, we've included it here based on its historical prominence in the Drayton Manor attraction lineup for 23 years. We're also sure this was many visitors' first roller coaster, including someone probably watching this video. The layout was also very standard for these types of mini coasters, featuring two small drops and a couple of turnaround sections. All in all, the experience lasted in and around 45 seconds. Despite its short length, we're sure that's a very sentimental 45 seconds. Similarly to Klondike Goldmine, the other Pinfari coaster on this list, this ride was later sold to Funland Hailing Island in 2018. Today, it operates as Magic Dragon at Camel Creek Adventure Park, still acting as people's first coasters. Apocalypse, 2000 to 2022. Rounding out our list is the most recent entry into the Drayton Manor attraction graveyard, Apocalypse. This attraction was the park's Intamin drop tower that originally opened on the 27th of May 2000. Apocalypse debuted with four towers on one structure, two of these for a seated experience and two offering a standing drop. In 2002, however, a fifth tower was added to the structure, offering the world's first floorless stand-up drop tower. This left riders' feet dangling from a stand-up position, the only of its kind at the time. The drop was 4 seconds long, dropping riders at 80 km an hour from a top height of 54 meters. It packed a punch though, and was definitely one of the most forceful drop towers found in Europe. It was highly regarded for this reason. Starting in 2019, the ride saw a lot of technical difficulties. One by one, the towers started closing until only two towers were operating by 2022, often only operating with one open. As seen previously in this video, money was said to be a major issue, or lack thereof it, in keeping this attraction alive. It was said that the other towers were too expensive and outside of budget to be fixed. Obviously, with the attraction only operating at 20% capacity, throughput suffered immensely. It wasn't indicative of the guest experience Drayton Manor liked to provide, and stuck between a rock and a hard place, a decision was finally made to retire the attraction on the 30th of October 2022. The ride was then fully removed over the course of the next month. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other video detailing the reasons why there aren't more dark rides in the UK. And of course, this isn't the entire list of now defunct Trayton Manor attractions. Please feel free to leave a comment with some attractions you can remember that are no longer with us. 
and now you're ready.